The Senate voted Monday to reject a so-called Born Alive bill. It was aimed at curbing late-term abortions. The bill would have required doctors to exercise the same level of care to an infant who survives an abortion that they would provide to any other baby born alive. The Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act was similar to legislation passed in 2002, but this included a fine and possible jail time for doctors who didn't comply. In her piece for CBSNews.com, digital reporter Kate Smith says the bill's introduction and the debate it sparked is part of a larger shift in focus within the abortion debate. Kate Smith joins me now. Kate, thanks so much for being here. Um, this is such a highly charged issue. You talk about this shift within this discussion of the abortion debate. Tell us more about that. Of course. Ever since Roe v. Wade passed, you're seeing a lot more support for legalizing abortion. So right now, about 60% of Americans believe that abortion should generally be legal for women in the first trimester of their pregnancy. But that support dwindles in the third trimester. According to a Gallup poll, it goes down to 13%. So those in the anti-abortion access camp, they see that as an opening to shift the debate around reproductive rights and focusing on this issue that is much, much more controversial than the first-term abortion that we're used to talking about. Well, what event reignited the debate surrounding late-term abortion? What ignited it was a statewide push in a lot of blue-leaning states to create laws that protected themselves in the event that Roe v. Wade became overturned. As we know, with Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court, people are concerned that this could happen within the next year, two, three years. It's imminent, potentially. So a lot of states are passing laws, introducing laws that protect themselves. Among those are potential clauses for late-term abortion. I should say so-called late-term abortions. Mm -hmm. That is not a medical term. In fact, most doctors reject that terminology. Um, these are instances when women, their health is in jeopardy, the baby is no longer viable. And so a lot of states have taken to, you know, make that language really clear that in those very rare situations, women are still protected. Well, how did senators react to the bill in Monday's debate? It was really interesting. I watched the debate, and it was as if they were speaking about two completely different things. Um, every Republican senator that spoke brought up those now infamous comments from uh, Governor of Virginia, where he spoke about late-term abortion and kind of in a clumsy way referenced it in inaccurately. And they all referenced this. They really capitalized on that moment, talking about late-term abortion. It's terrible. We should make sure it's not happening. Democrats on the other side, though, they we're talking about how we, this is attack on women's health, this is, you know, just blatantly trying to demonize abortion, because again, we're talking about something that's extremely rare. This is not something that happens to, you know, the vast, vast majority of women. So you mentioned in your piece that this legislation was expected to fail. What were the biggest criticisms of this bill? Of course. I mean, the biggest criticism is that people were just, this is an extremely rare situation. And when it does happen, this is when the women's health is at risk. This is when a the fetus is no longer viable. This, these are not elective abortions for no reason. That's number one. Number two was that there's actually already legislation that says almost the exact same thing as what the bill on Monday said. So in 2002, there was a very similar bill that basically established that when a fetus is born, when an infant is born, that is when personhood begins. Mm -hmm. So by not providing care to that infant, you are now, you know, it's required, mm -hmm. right? So the bill on Monday says virtually the exact same thing, except that it also goes a step further by saying that doctors could have um, up to five years in jail if they don't provide that care, and they could be looking at some very large fines. So how might Monday's decision impact the fight on the state level to protect abortion access in the event that Roe versus Wade is overturned? Absolutely. I think Monday's vote is kind of representative of what's going on in the states. You're seeing kind of everyone ahead of 2020 staking out their ground, seeing what's resonating with voters. And, and you can see that late-term abortion really resonates with voters. This is an extremely charged issue. And there's just, there's not a lot of information around it, not a lot of accurate information around it. So I think kind of Monday is representative of what you're going to see um, anti-abortion access advocates using for their platform to reignite that charge. All right, Kate Smith, thanks so much for joining us, Kate.